Hello, hello, hello. Hello. It's Tea Talk with Lydia Diamond. <laughs> and I have a special guest with me today. Say hello, Miss Farine Paris. <laughs> hello, Queen Lydia. All Hearts Inspiration. Thank you for having me. I absolutely <laughs> love All Hearts Inspirations. And the one thing I thought about today was I want All Hearts to be inspired to vote for our very first lady president. I'm excited. I'm ridiculously excited, I've been told. <laughs> but that's okay, because I feel represented by her. Yeah. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, introduce yourself. Well, hello, hello, hello. My name is Farine Paris. I use she, her pronouns. And I think first and foremost, I'm here. <laughs> I'm existing. I'm a black femme that is not just surviving, but trying to figure out how to thrive at this game called life. Mm -hmm. um, and in my different ways that I walk through this community, um, I'm a mother. I live out in Burlington in the New North End. Um, I am the owner of All Hearts Inspirations, which is a storytelling organization I started in 2020, mm -hmm. really inviting us as humans to remember we are filled with stories True. and how can we use those narratives to have a heartfelt moment or to have an accountability moment That's or right. a, an affirming moment, but we can use that in a variety of different ways. Um, and um, I feel just sitting with you, Lydia, the, the, the role of an activist comes to my heart because you and I, you know, in the last year plus, we've been involved in some movements, yeah. you know, regarding justice and liberation for black femmes. And so um, that's something that's close to the heart for Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. agree. I agree. Absolutely. One of the things I didn't do uh, before when Ty Green was here, mm -hmm. I want to do it now. Okay. And I want to share that, that very first Juneteenth celebration that she did in Burlington yeah. was phenomenal. <laughs> it was so great. It was so rewarding. And I mean, it was like the happiest Juneteenth ever, yeah. you know? I was blown away by all the people and the food. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was so fantastic. You know, and I carry that goodness in my heart. In spite of all of the rubbish that happened afterwards, but I wanted Ty to know she did a phenomenal job. She did a great job. There were so many happy folks mm -hmm. that day. And she didn't get her pat on the back, but she deserved two or three, you know, because she really did do something that's never been done before in Burlington. Yes. And I've been here 30 years, and that was like the greatest time that very first Juneteenth. And I just want to say thank you, you know. Unfortunately, all of the mess happened afterwards, but I just want her to know I'm grateful and I carry that goodness with me. Yeah, I mean, that affirmation of former director Taisha Green, the way that you just did that was through story, right? Like, that's why for me, I'm like, storytelling is the vessel. Like, I feel that's like right. we can free ourselves with stories, we can Absolutely. reclaim our narrative with stories. And the narrative that you just shared, I feel often I hear people in the community talk about mm -hmm. that first Juneteenth of 2021. Yes, yes. We as a community had no idea what was coming, and we didn't know how much we needed it until it was right there in front of us. I definitely needed it. Like, we needed that moment, right? Absolutely. Coming after this year of pandemic, the murder of George Floyd, yes. racial reckonings, yes. life has been canceled, relationships have shifted, isolation, and in comes this individual who's like, Y'all have never done something around Juneteenth. Oh my goodness. Right? It was like so and, and and a lot of people didn't know. Like a lot of people in the city did not know about this holiday. And I'll be transparent. I wasn't aware of Juneteenth until like my mid-30s. There was an event that um, we were trying to do and someone was like, we should do it on June 19th. And I'm like, they're like, Juneteenth. I'm like, what's that? They're like, <laughs> girls, okay, Juneteenth. But why doesn't everybody know about Juneteenth? Because our stories get erased too. 
Yes, they right? do. So stories can be really beautiful. It can be a beautiful vessel True. when done with intention and affirmation and accountability, right? So we tell the story of Juneteenth 2021. Oh, Myself, I've lived here for 12 years and I have never felt so seen mm. and held Represent. as a as a black person. Mm. Like I like I woke up that morning five two. Like I'm five two on a good day. <laughs> and I think by the time I put my head down, I think I was like ten feet, Lydia. I believe you. Because we were just lifting each other. Yes. And that to everybody. And it was beautiful. And it was everyone, right? Like for a no, moment. No. Let's yes. just love, let's just exist, let's just be. And you think about some of the things that allowed that magic to happen, and that vision of Director Green takes in a lot of things that are part of our culture, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. we take care of each other. Yes. You know, it's like, we're gonna break bread and we'll figure it out how to feed all of us. It you know, was, we need we need to have some good times. Absolutely. The body needs to move through double dutch. Yay. Like, poetry is a vibe. <laughs> Like, let's do a panel. Oh like, my when you think about what one person envisioned yeah. for a city on four different locations. And she did. In the she midst of the did pandemic. It. It was fantastic. All the brown and black vendors that got paid that day, that yeah. vended food for free. Like, mm -hmm. they were able to give community free food. Absolutely. But they got paid. Everybody on that day, brown and black, getting paid. Let me tell you what I did that day. I was part of the people's kitchen, mm -hmm. serving food, and I saw there's a long line of people, and I went and picked out the elders and brought them to the front of the line. And there was no fuss, no muss. Yeah. You know, it was appreciated, you know, and it made me feel good too. Yeah. It was phenomenal that day. I needed that. Yeah. Because, like, like full transparency, the business that I started, All Heart Inspirations, was started because I had to resign and quit mm. from one of the tox most toxic work environments I've ever existed in, and that's the University of Vermont. Oh wow! Right? I'm and I'm sorry. not the I'm not the first brown and black person to feel this, and I'm not the last. And it goes beyond brown and black because there's a lot of things happening at that institution. But you you the areas communities when you don't see yourself, when you don't feel affirmed, when you feel like people are asking you to do miracles with limited resources, it can play a game with your heart and your mind and your soul, right? And it's like, Absolutely. you know, I'm waking up each day, I'm doing this hustle called life, I'm looking at the mirror and I'm like, I see this woman, she got my hair, she got my <laughs> clothes, she got my, my, you know, my, my dad's <laughs> lips, but her eyes, her soul looks missing. I don't notice, like, you know, like sometimes like, and Juneteenth, if anybody was forgetting why black is just dope as hell <laughs> and why black culture is just so contagious on, and the black yes. excellence and yes. like literally so many things that people love, if you do the research, comes back to our collective. That's right. You knew it that day. Yes, indeed. That story that day was love black. That's right. Support black, liberate black, and everybody was down for the assignment. It was fantastic. And, I truly, right? truly enjoyed it. Now, I, full transparency, I was celebrated for Juneteenth like 20 years ago yeah. when I lived in Burlington. Yeah. Um, and it was a surprise because I didn't celebrate Juneteenth, but um, Roy and Shirley Hill, some elders of uh, what is it, New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church, they celebrated me with a plaque and a party at St. Mike's College <laughs> because I did two years on the school board. Yes. And it was not fun, and I got through it. But the best part was being celebrated through Juneteenth, yeah. you know, by elders of color mm -hmm. that I that I, you know, I recognize, I cherish them. You know, we had a great, great relationship. So for them to do something like that for me, yeah. I felt rewarded and uplifted and loved, you know? And so, but what Taistia did, baby, it was <laughs> so, I mean, it was like rewarding everybody, Yeah, you know? Everybody was represented, every black, brown, everybody was up in, 
on point. And everybody was uplifted and celebrated. And it felt so fantastic. Yeah. You know, in spite of the messiness. Because you're right, it was after George Floyd. And yeah. We were in an uproar. You we know, were like in the uproar. country was in an uproar. Yes, we were grieving. <coughs> people were dying. We weren't even able to say goodbye to people. And you said like, it. my dad got really sick during COVID. Really? Like, we almost lost him. Oh. Right, and I remember him going into the hospital, but we weren't allowed to go in, right? So right. I went back to visit, but it was more to take care of my mom, like my sisters navigating stuff over the phone. So to come out in that level of community, yes. that deep, yes. that vibrant, it was rewarding. and it's like, ooh, you don't have to pay anything. That's just, right. Just go. Everything if you can just great. show up, we got you. It was great. We got you. And boy, did that, did that happen. And that energy like carried into the, the next season with it curated by Jersey. Because when I hear you talking about being celebrated with, around the Juneteenth time, you know, Jersey at the, as the creator brought a beautiful award celebration to oh, the Juneteenth and trying to I remember. invite us to celebrate our, our black community members yes. and the variety of different things that we do. 28 days in a row, she did that. Right? That was phenomenal. Oh, oh, yes. oh, the woman, that was the other thing that she brought, the the, the February one, and she did it in okay. March. Like, I, she she did so great. many dope things, right? Yes, it was but great. I remember receiving my award and, 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 and being celebrated by my community, and that, like, that feels good. It was Cause awesome. Because you know what? We, we're going to do the work. That's we're going right. to show up. Because this is what we do. This is what we do, baby. But That's right. you know what? It does feel a little good to be seen, <laughs> to be affirmed. I see you. All right. In spite of all these things that you are holding, yes. right? Because we're not just black, we're mothers, we work, you know? Like there's so many identities intersecting with what we have to hold. And still with all of that, we show up for community. Amen. Like we like because that's you know a part of that is that's all America has ever kind of known of the black woman and how we, from the beginning of times of enslavement, have always been there. That's right. To pick somebody up. That's to right. To nurse somebody's child. That's right. Right. To that's birth right. people's you know different you know like it's just so part I, of our identity. And it's we like always show up. Yeah. Always. But always willing to help, always willing to, you know, carry forth life. Yeah. You know, yeah. absolutely. But, but can we get respect on our name? Sometimes, because you it's know. It's 2024. Four. It's about to be 25. It's 2024, right? Yeah. And no matter who I, sp like, you can speak with a variety of, and my lens right now is around like the black woman, the black femme, right? Like that's an identity that's really salient to me. But whether you talk to the, to the littles in the community, you know, the teens, folks in their mid 20s, 30s, our elders, what hasn't changed is the disrespect. I know. Isn't it, it like it hasn't, it hasn't like, you know, when I started the storytelling work to like go into the Hunt Middle School and you're working with students who wanna tell their narrative and I remember there were six student storytellers. And out of the six, four were students of color. They were all women of color, mm. black identified women. And three of their narrative talked about racism, right? Like, what is it like to like, you just trying to go to school. Like there's a poem where like a teacher is mad that you didn't have a pencil. And so the poem talks about all the things that you had to deal with before you could even be in that seat because you had to feed your sibling, because you had to like walk someone to school, That's because right. maybe you had to take care of a parent. So now you want to get on my back because I don't have a pencil? That's right? not okay. And so I, I wish I invite people to possibly see us that way, mm -hmm. right? Like because we've been overworked, flipped left and right, Ooh. disrespected, unsupported, say that. and like say I that. can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. I'm not trying to be angry. I'm not trying to flex, but at, I'm tired of the disrespect. It's, it's like beyond past time for folks to grow up and show respect. Because I think I said it before, we don't want to fight. We don't want to argue. We don't want to be disrespected. But it's always 
that. It's always there. Yeah. You know, and we get exhausted with having to check them. Yeah. Check them. Yeah. Check them. And even you mentioned Hunt Middle School. Yeah. I have four adult children, and they all went to Hunt. You know, my oldest two sons are 41 and 42. When we first came here, we lived at Northgate. So they all went yeah. mm -hmm. through, you know, and they did like a count of children of color, and there were seven. Three of them belonged to me. Okay. And back then. You're almost making 50% of yes. the brown and black percentage of and, students. And in we district. went through a lot. You know, we went through a lot. And my youngest son went through the most, you know, because he went to John Jay, Flynn, then Hunt, and then BHS. And, you know, the school system, and it's not, I can't say that it's, it's just the school system because some of it is people. Yeah. People who practice these behaviors that are unnecessary, nitpicking, you know. Um, they traumatize our children because of the color of their skin, and it's not okay. And then you can't talk about it, you know, without them accusing you of being the aggressor. Yeah. I'm just trying to protect my child and make sure that you're not traumatizing my child, you know. And then they look at us like we're crazy. Yeah. But they wouldn't like it when it's done to theirs. Exactly. You know? Your words uh, bring me back to an emotional moment that I had at a PTO meeting mm. for, for Flynn Elementary. Okay. As we kind of talk about, um, you know, some of the schools out that way. And it's always hard going to anything PTO mm -hmm. because I know, I know a few things. I'm going to possibly be the only one. Yep. <laughs> And there are a lot of topics that y'all aren't going to talk about unless I bring it up, right? And so you right. do this dance of, I don't want to be that person who always talks about race, but nobody else wants to bring it up, right? And I just remember looking at these parents, and I was there originally just really frustrated and upset with what happened to the former principal, um, Nikki, um, who was our um, principal of Flynn and the the first transgender principal in the district mm. in the state of Vermont. Oh, wow. Who's no longer there. Oh, wow. And when you follow that story, like some of it just even overlaps with what happens to black women, but it's like the disrespect for, for, for being your authentic self sometimes, right? But I just remember asking these parents, am I wrong for wanting things to represent my kids, affirm my kids, love on my kids. What am I asking that is different from y'all? Y'all are gonna get a lot of things because the system just, you know, like leans that way towards That's you. Right. That's you don't right. have to be like, will my child have a child that looks like me? You don't have to be like, will there, will there be a coach that can have my child's back if people start shouting mean things from the crowd about their, you don't think about these things. Or racial right? slurs. But this, but this is my life. This is your life. This is our life, right? And I'm like, why is it there's such a resistance mm. for me just as much as you wanting my child to feel represented, safe, and existing. Exactly. You know? And it's exactly. just like, I find myself as a black one, like, it's like the hustle and the grind. Like, look at what, look at the justice for Taisha Green right now. We've been in that movement since, um, well, a fir it first initially started with a small group of us in March of 2022 with Moreau. A group of us black women went to his meeting at the Bagel Place after Taisha had resigned. She mm. had just left. And we were sharing our concerns as black femmes, seeing another one of ours pushed out, concerns about the REIB. We were throwing all these things out. And then, you know, within a year, last August, you were with us on the floor with everything that has happened with Taisha Green. So I'm gonna just take a moment mm -hmm. just so we can all be clear mm -hmm. because this is a prime example of how black women are martyred and used at the expense for other individuals to move their way up. All of this writing that's out there, all of the news, all of these sound bites 
connecting Taisha with mishandling a Juneteenth budget for 2022. It's literally not possible because she left our state <laughs> in March of 2023. Mm. Bye bye. <laughs> there was another interim director in charge, mm. and that is Pitt. Okay, so the 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 uh, the 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 violence of how much has been put on Taisha mm -hmm. for a responsibility for an event and a budget, and she literally was not like she's in Minneapolis. Like wow. Like so that so and how does that happen? It happens with Moreau going on a show and saying just a little something because those are called dog whistles, right? Mm. And then you know somebody hears that dog whistle and then someone like Sasha at Seven Days will write something like an article, mm -hmm. like and. All people have to do is just take a few words, and then before you know it, we're running with a single dangerous story. And everybody is now looking the other way because you're realizing you kind of played some bystander energy in this. It's but crazy. I just want to know that we've continued to victimize, harm, mob an individual that physically left our state in 2023, like 2020, um, in 2022, I'm sorry. March 2022. So the Juneteenth 2022 that everyone wants to keep killing her soul about, it doesn't have anything to do with her because she physically wasn't here. But yet, it doesn't matter how much I say that, you say that, because we are still fighting for her. Because I'll be wow. going to city council after this. Because the current administration needs to be on the side of justice. Absolutely. And this city literally played a conspiracy game with the city of Minneapolis, and they mobbed That's this black woman. They set up this black woman. They, they put out dog whistles so people could pick them up and get stirred up on this black woman. And why does that happen? Because we pay the price for being the first. This is we true. We pay the price for being the first. This is very true. And so, this is what happens to the first black lesbian department head of the city of Burlington because you pay the cost for being the first mm -hmm. in spite of all that you gifted Juneteenth empowerment funds uh, giving uh, gift cards out to families and in insecurities you know starting a reparations task these are all the things that she's putting out and then somehow she was used and manipulated to be a part of something that she physically wasn't even here that's the mystery. Well, that, you know, <laughs> for me, you know, to accuse her of such BS, it makes everybody a suspect. Yes. You know, and, and what is their goal, you know? Who's really the person who spent that money, you know? And why target someone who's no longer here because you thought you could get away with that? Bingo. It's not okay. It's mm -hmm. not okay. And, I, you know, I am the, I'm the first black woman to run for South Burlington City Council. And, I mean, I have had black people read me, white people get upset because I asked, you know, am I the first black? And... But you know something? I brushed that off and kept moving forward because I didn't step up for just myself. I stepped up for us. Because that's what we do. Because <laughs> we need representation too. And it's, you know, white folk get it automatically and we always have to fight for it. Yeah. It's unreal. I'm really sorry about everything that Ty is going through because I can relate. You know, I've been discriminated against in housing, at work, been here 30 years. My children, you know, have been, like my youngest son, he went to, is it John Flynn? Anyway, when he was in elementary, he was spit on and called the Nick. And I've been advocating ever since, you know? So, yeah. people need to change the way they think. People need to stop seeing us as monsters, because we're not. We've been carrying this world, this is what it means to be indigenous. 
We've been carrying this world from day one, lovingly. But we get tired of being the target yeah. all the time. And everybody don't know that they're being targeted. Some folks need to be taught what to look for. Sure. You know? Yeah, I didn't, like, that was me when I was working at UVM. Like, you don't know that the system's eating you until it's too late. Exactly. Like, on two different occasions in my last four years there, I had to go on medical leave. I believe To, to it. deal with the, the, the racial trauma and the health complications. I remember when someone telling me that black femmes age seven times faster internally than what we show out, right? People don't see what's going on inside, right? Because black don't crack, brown don't frown. But I've been this person, I'm like, I don't want it. Don't call me resilient, I don't want it. Don't call me strong, I don't want it. Because I'm actually deserving of being soft. Mm. I actually wanna be, I wanna heal, and I wanna be soft, and I wanna thrive, right? Because it's not just about Taisha as we do this work. It is about the various black women in this community, in this state, black folks that feel this harm, feel erased. Like I'm looking at what's happening right now to the first racial equity and inclusion and belonging office. Mm -hmm. And if you, if, you, if you pay attention to what has been happening the last couple of years since Taisha resigned, mm -hmm. that budget went from general fund dollars to temporary funds, positions are not getting filled. Like, there's conspiracies happening that then affirm for me that we really want to constantly re resist the existence of black joy, black excellence. Because I feel like, did we pay a price for the joy of Juneteenth? Absolutely. Right? It's like, it's one, th they're used to us suffering. Yeah. They know, like, they're used to us suffering. But having a collective be as joyful as we were, yes. I think it makes people be like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> because I know for me, after that Juneteenth, there was definitely more flex in my step. Ooh, yes, indeed. I was not, I was done with people trying to tell me what a truth is when I'm like, I have the receipt, you are lying. <laughs> well, you're lying, you're lying. Joan Shannon, you're lying, these people are lying. And I am not going to allow another black woman to like to die on our like die on my watch on my watch that's right i'm Don't not gonna sit even here and continue to have a front row to what's happening to taisha green yeah and we need to do something and we need to do it now i agree and i appreciate you i appreciate you i appreciate you greatly good sister <laughs> this has been tea talk i'm lydia diamond and my great sister here, Fareen Harris, we got more to come. Don't forget to vote on November 5th. And vote blue. Vote for Kamala. I don't care if you're Republican, progressive. I want our first lady president. It's our turn. All right? Yeah! I'm so excited. For a lady president. <laughs> Point of sisters. <laughs> Woo! I am excited. I'm real. It's our turn. I don't care what nobody say. It's our turn. It's our turn to be recognized for what we do. And I think Kamala is a beautiful woman. Black. Um, what the Japanese? Uh, Indian. Yeah, In, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. listen, she represents well. Okay, I love it. Yeah! I love the way she handled Chump, too. Oh! She does such a good job. <laughs> Thank you.